Hey all, Taylor here. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about iPad gaming. This is the base M4 iPad 13 inch, 256 gigs of storage, nine core CPU processor, and eight gigs of RAM. This does have the full fat 10 core GPU though, and it has the OLED screen. The GPU is capable of ray tracing as well. So this should be an absolute gaming beast. I'm gonna test it with the Apple Pencil and the keyboard, which will set you back $1,777 US. Let's check it out. This video is not sponsored and it was completely funded by me. So if you wanna show your support, hit that like button and subscribe. The first game I'm going to start with is Alien Isolation, which at this point is not a new game. It's nearing 10 years old by now, but it is compatible with a mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to see how it works with the whole magic keyboard and trackpad. So I'm moving my hand around the touchpad to get the cursor to show, but I'm not seeing a cursor while I can hit the keys on the keyboard to go up and down. Let's check out options, Can virtual joystick, still no touchpad cursor virtual trackpad, which this is a trackpad, and still nothing. But let me try connecting a mouse. I'm going to try connecting my Logitech mouse here. This is the MX Master 3S. Oh, and we got a pop up here, use mouse. And there's the cursor. Okay, so the trackpad will not work. And here I am in game with the mouse and keyboard. The keyboard feels really solid. The mouse feels nice, but there is a little bit of input lag that I'm noticing. I don't know if that's because of the game, the iPad or the mouse itself, but I really haven't experienced this latency issue on a regular computer. So maybe it's just the iPad. Wow, this OLED screen is awesome for this game because the darks are just so dark. Oh and all the lights just went out. Oh my God, that is terrifying. Keyboard and mouse support in Divinity Original Sin 2 is great as well. However, it is kind of weird when you hit escape and you go into this menu because it kind of loses the cursor. Like I'll hit escape and look, there's the iPad cursor, but not the in-game cursor. The in-game cursor is there. So I have to click into it again to get the cursor, which is kind of weird. One game that I'm really excited to try with mouse and keyboard is of course Call of Duty Mobile. And oh my goodness, look at this UI. What the hell is going on here? This looks like one of those 90s internet sites where you have all the pop-ups. This is kind of ridiculous. But my hopes are pretty high because I'm using my mouse right now to kind of spin my character and I can click on like buttons and such to bring up menu items so i think this is going to work we'll see mouse and keyboard didn't work at all with call of duty so i tried the touch screen which went about as well as you would expect oh my goodness this look i just accidentally hit the fire button i did not mean to do that this is so difficult i would be surprised if i get even a single kill let's see okay there we go i got i got one but yeah like maneuvering it's like moving it's moving the icon. Why is it doing that? This is just, I can't see how anyone can play like this regularly. The next option is connecting a controller. Now I've gotten this to work before, but for whatever reason, I could not get my PS5 or my Xbox controller working with Call of Duty, even though the game was recognizing that they were connected. So as of this video, controllers don't work with Call of Duty Mobile. And this is where the keyboard and mouse journey really ends for iPad. There isn't that many games that support it. The only other game that I found was Hitman Blood Money. So for the rest of the video, I continue with my PS5 controller, which brings us to Resident Evil 7. If you have the budget to shell out for a controller in addition to the iPad, then I will say that the experience is very nice, especially on um, a new game release like this, where Resident Evil 7 just works so great with the controller. And my goodness, the graphics look absolutely amazing. You're probably wondering how many games you can actually fit on the base model 256 gig iPad. And that's gonna vary game to game, but here is my roster of games that I have installed on this iPad with Death Stranding 
taking up a whopping 43 gigs of space, which leaves the iPad with about 48 gigs of storage left. And again, depends how many games you can fit based on the size of games that you're installing. If you want to get more out of the iPad, well, you don't have a lot of options in terms of storage, but what you can do is you can take your Mac, if you have one, and stream your games from your Mac to your iPad via Sidecar. You're probably asking yourself why you would want to use Sidecar, and one is you might have games on Steam, which isn't available on the iPad, on your Mac, and you want to take advantage of playing those games on your iPad screen. Since you're streaming your max output to the iPad, you can really take advantage of this if you have a powerful Mac, like this M1 Max with 32 GPU cores, opposed to this iPad with 10 GPU cores. Streaming that image is gonna give you higher resolutions, and you can also crank those settings to higher textures and shadows than something you would be able to if you were running natively on the iPad. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the 16-inch MacBook Pro's M1 Max running Death Stranding and the iPad Pro running Death Stranding. One thing to note is that you will have to connect your controller to your Mac instead of your iPad since it is essentially streaming from your Mac to your iPad, so it makes sense to connect this to the Mac. Because the iPad Pro has a USB-C port, I can actually connect my OLED monitor to it via that port. And this is the Alienware AW3225QF. This is the third generation QD OLED monitor in 4K. And this cable does not come with this monitor. I bought this separately. It's a DisplayPort 1.4 to USB-C cable, and it works fine in this case for connecting to the monitor. And what I have set up here is I have this as my other display and I have stage manager enabled, which should give me the option to full screen apps. Even with stage manager's full screen option, I wasn't able to get the image to truly full screen as it looks like it wants to stick to the iPad's native aspect ratio, which is three by two. So you will have some bars on the side where the image doesn't cover, but this is essentially as large as you'll be able to get it on a normal 16 by nine monitor, like I have here on this 4K 16 by nine screen. And note that even though this is a 240 Hertz screen, the most Hertz you will be able to achieve with this is the native 120 that is present on the iPad since the settings will not allow you to go higher than 120 frames per second. Finally, I know you guys are dying to see what it is like to game with the Apple Pencil Pro. That is what has been on your mind this whole video and what better game to demonstrate than Balloons Tower Defense 6. I mean, this is the peak of Apple Pencil Pro gaming. It does not get better than this. I mean, this is probably just peak gaming in general right here. I mean, kidding it aside, this actually does work actually pretty well for placing the monkeys where you want them and just like hitting play. You can just kind of dictate where things go with the pencil. That's kind of cool. Just like, oh, I want to put him here. And you get like pinpoint accuracy with the pencil. And you don't smudge up your screen because, oh my gosh, the screen is so prone to fingerprints with that glossy screen. But this, you can just kind of grab the monkey, put him there, go. It's actually kind of enjoyable and I kind of want to play more with the Apple Pencil on this game specifically. And that's my experience gaming on the 13 inch iPad Pro. Leave a comment down below with what games you're playing on your iPad Pro if you're playing any. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.